where we start out with our lessons this morning with the people of Israel being in the home. Here they are out in the desert. And they're starting to complain against Moses and Aaron saying, you should have just left us in Egypt and let us die there at the hands of the Egyptians because it would have been better to die on a full belly than to be out here in the desert and starve to death. They were getting hungry. The provisions with which they had left Egypt were running out and they didn't see any way they were getting anything else and they thought we were going to die out in this desert. They didn't have much money. Moses wasn't sure what to do. We talked to God and God said, don't worry, I've got your back. I'll take care of it. So God calls the people together. He calls them together. And in the distance, on the horizon, they see the glory of the Lord. Now, we're not exactly sure what that means. But I don't think it's kind of a bright light that's not there where the sun is. And it's something that you can see that says God's there, but you don't get to see God because that's probably not good for you. And God says there will be bread on the ground in the morning, and there will be meat here tonight. In a little while, in the evening, quails, not mama. Well, we need to be clear about this. They came and settled, and the people were able to catch them up. Now, they didn't have shotguns like we did. I bet y'all don't know this. Anybody will, will test your knowledge. You ever heard of an English settler? I see a few knockers. They point birds. Well, originally, they didn't point. When they got to the birds, they, they went down on the belly on the ground. They sat. Because the hunters were coming behind them and didn't have shotguns either. They had nets. And they'd throw the nets out over in front of the dogs to catch the birds. That's why they had set it. When you got fire on them, they taught them to stand up for it. But it's the truth, you can't make this kind of stuff up. <laughs> So the Israelites kept that. They were able to catch up quite well and roast them up and had a fine old time and there was a man on the ground in the morning and they weren't sure what it was. And Moses said, This is your bread. And he told them how much to get each day and stuff like that. And they were able to be sustained in this desert environment where they were wandering from place to place, always looking for water and food and stuff like that. And we know that the reason it took them 40 years to get from point A to point B is because Moses being the guy never stopped and asked the direction. No, that's not true. There were a couple of things going on. Of course, they had made God mad when they had they sent spies into the land of Canaan and 14 of the 16 who came back and all those men landed through the child. We can't do anything with them. We're lost. Only Caleb and Joshua said, Oh, we can take these people. You're the only two that make the cross. God said that all of you will die in the journey. Now, part of that is that, but the other part is, is that they had all grown up as slaves and had a slave's mentality. You know, you know there's that proverb in the Bible that says, You know, Raise a child up in a certain way, and that's who they're going to be when they grow up. And that's the truth. We know that. You can sometimes, you know, you can look back and remember what a child was like four years old, and he's 40, and he's still the same. He never got over it. So, a part of what's going on in this wandering in the desert is building up a tougher mentality for people that are going to have to go to war and conquer a land to be able to settle. And over and over again, things will come up and they will lose heart and they will grumble to Moses and Aaron. And Moses and Aaron will go to God and God says, I got you back. I'll take care of it. And God does. And he provides for his people. In the gospel today, Jesus, and you know, we came, he was walking out on the water to the boat. He got in the boat, the boat went all the way ashore. 
Now, I've never seen a bug quite do that, but I believe that that's what happened. And the crowds are going, how did you get it? You're over there. How did you get here? You can't do that in that amount of time. They were just bone fumbling completely. And then Jesus starts talking to them about food. They go, wait a minute. What are you saying? He says, you need the bread of life. And they said, well, show us that bread so that we can eat it, so that we will be filled and not be hungry. And then Jesus says these two words in Greek. Ego, amen. Now, I know that's all Greek to you. But that's the Greek word for I am. Now that's important. Because when Moses is at the burning bush, when he's been living with his father for a while out in the desert, tending sheep, he sees this bush on flame and it's not burning up and crumbling away. And he goes there and God says, I'm going to send you back to Egypt to lead the people out of there bondage and at one point Moses says well if I'm going to do this who shall I tell me told me to do all this and he's saying what's your name and God says tell them Yahweh is sent you now in Hebrew Yahweh is I am. And that's important. God simply declares, I am. And throughout the whole of that Exodus journey, the God who says, I am, comes to their rescue again and again and again and again. This is pattern that is set for the whole of the Old Testament. People get themselves in a jam. And I am comes to the rescue. So here in this sixth chapter of John, when the people say, give us this bread, and Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He's making a divine plan. He's saying, physically, I am the bread of life. I am going to do for you what you cannot do for yourselves. I am going to give you what you cannot get for yourselves. I am going to be for you what you cannot be for yourself. I am going to be person in whom there is salvation. Now, he didn't say anything yet about crucifixion and resurrection or anything like that, but we know we're on the way there. We know we're on the way there. Jesus is making a declaration that when they remember the God of the Old Testament, Yahweh, Appears to Moses at the burning bush. The Yahweh that is behind that screen of glory when he provides quail and manna for the people who are going hungry in the desert. And again and again and again in all the situations of the Old Testament where God comes to the people of Israel. That same I am comes in Jesus. That same care comes in Jesus. That same perseverance comes in Jesus. That same delight in God's people comes in Jesus. God always has got our back. Doesn't seem that way sometimes, I know. Sometimes it's only when we look back at something and we say, oh, I guess maybe God did have my back after all. 
can tell it in the present, we can look back and see that it happened. Jesus is making a definitive, declarative statement. Who he is, what he will mean for us and for the whole world. I am the bread of life. Bread of life. And I bring life to you. You come to me. We had our first uh, first communion class today. It was kind of interesting. We had some lovely young ladies, but they were off the quiet. I got feeling we get to know it. We get to know each other a little better. They won't maybe be quite so quiet. But one of the things we talked about is, is that the habits that we have now are the habits that form us as adults. So when we come to church and worship, when we come and we receive communion, that makes us who we are. You can come up to the communion rail and you can get the bread and wine and say, that didn't mean anything to me today. That's not true. God comes to us in that special way, whether we know it or not. It shapes and forms us. It makes us the people that we become. You know, one of the interesting things about the word Yahweh, we always translate, we say it's I am. But it can have a couple other meanings. And one of those is that I will become what I become. That's an interesting thing because to us it tells us we become who we become. We're not static. You know, the, uh, now, now that I want to call his name, I won't be able to get it right. Um, I just tell you the name of the book. It's called Gifts of the Jews How a Desert Tribe Changed the World. And it's, it's one of the series of books called Hinges of History. But what the author tells us in there is that the Jews are the first people to look at the future as something that is open and not closed. In the ancient world, there was this idea that everything that went around came around, and you, all you did have, all you had was an endless cycle of the same thing. But for the Jews, they developed this idea from God that the future could be different than the past. That the future was open, that they could become what they were not yet. And that's what communion does for us. It lets us become who we are not yet, but can be. Union is God's love, God's care, the sacrifice of Jesus, and hope for what we can do instead of what we are. Amen.